as the video title reads, um, for my new video here, um, escape the standard western side approach while you can. Now, this is a very controversial title, and it is, and it is, and I have a lot to cover in this video cover for sure, but I mean, I'm going to try to make it not too long, but, you know, this is, um, you know, I'm going to try the best I can. And, you know, I've had this video idea for a while. I mean, I've said some of the things I'm about to say before, but I'm trying to piece this all in one video with, um, you know, personal experience. I know, antidotal, um, anecdotal, um, but this is from my, um, biased website with this, this personal experience, but I'm going to go through it in this whole video so you guys can get an understanding of what happened to me, um, you know, what happened to me, who I am, and, um, you know, how I went through this, uh, health thing, but, um, again, this is gonna be a lot, a lot to cover, but, you know, okay, so, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this, um, so, yeah, how escaping the, the standard Western diet, you know, which I don't like calling things a diet, I like calling things a way of living, a lifestyle of eating, could change the, uh, you know, this could change the entire Western culture forever. You know, this is, and I never thought I'd see the day, I'd see the day speaking about this, but I can't afford it much longer speaking about this due to the amount of research I've put together, undoubtedly. And, um, I'm going to go through it today. And hopefully you guys get an understanding. Um, you may see some computers in the binary line of web pages to see what, um, what is this about, what am I on? But, you know, again, it's a new year, new things, you know, and I really want to, you know, this be a new year and for me and many other people and to help a lot of people, you know. And I really want to make some sort of change here somehow. I mean, I'm very passionate about nutrition and research. And as you guys may tell, I definitely think that people deserve and need to know this. I mean, I'm need to know. I live in the worst death. The death of what I see in every way. I have um, unbiased websites. I have scattered all of my unbiased websites. And um, I'll try to go to buy, um, I'll try to go by each one. But um, one by one with explanation and the source to show you guys so you guys can see it. You know, like, you know the same as a diet and you know. I'll I'll just I'll dive into it. Specifically, ketogenic, low carbohydrate, you know, and eat juicy on it and not put it down on it. Um, so, one by one explanation. I'll try to list time frames for each course so it's easy to find. So, I'm definitely going to have to list all these unbiased ones. So, some of the things I have descriptions of. So, where am I going to start? Um, you know, this, this story will kind of be really eye-opening, so I'm just going to tell you something. It's going to be pretty good, I think. So, I can only, I can not only give you, you know, this personal experience to take away, and hopefully it's inspiring for you too, you know, whenever you're watching. And, um, you know, okay, so, I say I'm biased, but I can Typically, avoid biased sources when they are clean, easy, and okay. And unbiased is uh, more uh, leaning towards, you know, the factual and pragmatical approaches of things. And I'm not mainly focused, and I'm mainly based, and I'm not mainly No, oh, okay. So, that being said, so I'm going to um, dive into the explanation of the time courses before discussion 
of anything I start. So, um, for sure. So, okay. So, I'm going to go to that right now. So, here we are. So, we got web sources and, um, right here. So, I'm going to explain more about what I mean by this. And then, you know, what I found. This is what I found. And also, I was taught this in English class in, in school. And it kind of goes in, um, the same way in depth, like for research, whatnot. You know, I learned the same thing. They taught the same thing in, you know, English class in school. But, um, okay, so the, the first question would be for this, would be for which domain extension is the most reliable for research? And they list, the, you know, we, we list here, we see .com, .net, .org, or .edu. Um, could it be any of these? Okay, so we're going to go through this. Okay. So first, let's look at well, what each domain um, extension is made for, intended for, made. Um, so we got .com here, and that stands for commercial websites. .net is... Network related domains. .edu is domains for educational entities, and .org is for non-profit organizations. So, you know, it is important. Uh, it says here, you know, it is important to remember here. Although it says org was originally intended for nonprofit organizations, but um, that no longer holds true. But it says here, it says, okay, but although most nonprofit sites prefer to use org, which is true, because I see in some of my sources, especially on CCRM.org and um, CCRM. .org. That word is as follows. It's, it stands for Physicians Committee for Hospital but it's just not when you when you get in the browser. It looks at it as a nonprofit organization. So I do see um, that it's true somewhat that nonprofit organizations tend to gravitate towards that word um, extension web sources. So yeah, I mean so. Unbiased, you know, typically, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's also, I mean, it's leaning towards the middle ground. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, middle ground, middle, and not leaning towards an, a favorable opinion. You know, it's really in between, right? It's right here in the middle, and it's here to um, explain to us, you know, uh, it's going to give us, a, it's going to, when you, when you, when you look at truth, when you want to look for truth, you know, there's, you look at the truth, okay, you see one side, okay, you see the this left side and this right side. And basically, you know, you don't want to go too far to the, um, to the, to the, to the left or to the right, but you want to just be just right in that Goldilocks zone in the middle. Where it says, okay, we're going to cut to this chase, you know, with this and this and that information. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to under make it understandable to what I mean. But, yeah, typically to get the full truth and not too much leaning towards one side, not to lean towards the right side, you just want to be just right smack in the middle. So, yeah, that's that's that. Anyways, um, so it says here. Although one domain extension might be better than another, depending on your type of research you're doing, which can be all fairly helpful. For example, .com is the most generic, most common, most used generic TLD top-level domain. So it means anyone can purchase a .com domain. Because of this, it is important to not use. Yeah, so they promote not using specifically .com when you want to source something for research and to prove something or anything, whatever you want to do, it says not simply not to use that because of the domain name, you will definitely want to find out, it says, 
um, here, who is in charge of this site to validate, to, to even validate the information, you know, because like you want to know what your information comes from and you want to make sure it's not favorable to towards any side of opinion except for factual, um, pragmatical, um, common sense, by, I mean, unbiased, you know, truth where you'll get the most accurate of it, you know, so. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Yeah, um, so yeah, you want to validate, the, I mean, it says here that you got to use .com to validate your um, your information for research, and that's kind of a pain in the neck to do all that, so it's just best to all, at all costs, avoid that that web source. It said, okay, so next we got .NET, .NET was um, originally for organizations and businesses that were involved with networking, like infrastructure, and it says infrastructure companies and internet service providers. This is no longer the case. There are many people that who purchase a .NET um, domain because of the .com version was already registered. It doesn't mean the sites are any less useful. Will contain or won't contain, but since anyone can register. A site under TLD is important to research. It says here it is important to research the site you, you um you are using is to validate information as soon as you would do as a dot com site. Dot edu it says okay. Okay, it says it's a sponsored top level domain. Anyone who wants to register, it says here anyone that wants to register a dot edu must be affiliated with an institute of higher education since two thousand one. It has included the United States accredited for accredited four year institutions, community colleges, um, universities system, and other post secondary second educational system institutions. Although information dot edus are fairly credible, yeah, I mean that is true. It is so important to validate the information found on those sites. It says okay. Dot org was originally intended for organizations that were non commercial or non profit. And it says this restriction was not enforced eventually until done away with, and now it can be used for anyone for any purpose. But now the third largest, but it says it's not regulated. Okay, right? So basically, it says, yeah, the gist of it, it says when searching online credible information, there are five categories you want to look at, regardless of the main extension, all right? Information that has an author's names listed and the person willing to stand by behind the information presented. And it allows that at that point for you to research the person's credentials. This helps you know if the information is provided is relevant, it says. Oh yeah, this is important. Okay. Any site like that you know these these will preferably these dot org dot net dot edu or what um whatever like you know what i mean especially those they should be listing so yeah it says here i'm gonna go i'm gonna see if i can get it um so when you look at the bottom of an article, right, and it says sources, okay, and it says credible sites and articles, you know, they will usually cite their sources, which you definitely want. You definitely want this. When you see, like, a bunch of sites, that's pretty good. You know, you, it's pretty good that they you can go off those, you know. That's pretty good. When you start seeing, like... Sources right under the article, and that's that's a good thing, you know. But it says to watch out. It, this is stuff to watch out for, you know. Site design, poor design, and poor um, writing skills, date, and you know, a date is good because you'll know if you, if it's provided recent, you know. But you know there is factors to it. You know, a lot of things with when I'm researching online for online web sources, but yeah, I mean, that being said, 
these definitely seem like um, credible, pretty credible information I have here. You know, it's just like um, it's very important to have all this stuff. It's very important that I have all this stuff when I research. But you know, it's it's, it's the um researching is great. You know, I've been I've been, it's just. Helps the mind go, keep going, and keep busy for sure. But, okay, so now we're going to get into the best part here. I mean, one of the more juicier part. So I'm going to um, tell you about my story right now. This is anecdotal, though, but I'll be able to cover my tracks, and you'll see why it's very soon, okay? For sure. Um, so now... This is my story with obesity, obesity me. So after the year 2013, I noticed my body was changing. You know, it certainly felt different. It was slowly getting worse each year because I was getting weight, you know, no effort. It was just happening. I, I was like, and you know, I was in confusion. I didn't know why it was happening, you know, throughout my high school years. You know, I was depressed, and I was really looking, and I was really losing hope at this point. <laughs> I had to be put on SSR um, I medication. You know, that's a Bilify. You know, it's an anti. I can't remember the exact class of Abilify. I think it's antidepressant. Don't get me wrong. Don't quote me. I'm just going off. But all I know is it caused me. You know, it was more problematic. I gained even more weight, and I started clearing out the fridge like crazy. Like, I started, you know, of course, all the unhealthy food you could imagine. All the chips, potato chips, and all the, you know, fried fatty foods. You know, because of my destructive eating, um, well, because of my struck, because of what this had led to destructive eating, and, you know, I, I, it definitely was a medication and a symptom from that medication. So in 2016, I was at my peak worst weight. Man, this is this is pretty bad. I mean, I gained this all really quickly too. And I I know if I if I didn't do something like it was it was a scary rate I was climbing on weight gain. But okay, but at my worst weight, I was 235 pounds. And you may be saying, "Oh my God, that's not even that bad." I'm like, it still was bad. You know, I was in a teenage year when this all happened. You know, and that's not good to have all that weight when you're, when you're starting to become a teenager and, you know, well, you know, as BC is really common now. And I was, you know, I knew it was going to climb from there if I didn't do something enough. I mean, I could go well over, I could go well over 240, 250, 260, 270, like 300. I could, I could probably go all the way up to that if I was still on the, that medication today. You know, it could have been the worst. You know, it was, it was nearing the end of my education. I'm going to talk about this. My high school for the graduation. You know, an undesirable event happened. A very rude student called me fat. You know, I was like, oh, man, how could someone say like something like this? I, I just, you know, I was just angry at how he could just, I was like thinking to myself, how can he say such a horrible comment? But, okay. Even though it was the reality, you know, I was dealing with obesity, I knew something had to change for sure. You know, that nasty comment, it led me to ponder and wonder a solution to where I don't have to worry about this anymore, of being obese and upset, you know, and constantly upset about it. You know, it's like, you know what, you know, and this only made me driven, <laughs> To decide to change my journey, you know, decide my journey right now, at that, that time in 20, in 2016, and to, to lose the weight for good, for good, long term. And I was like, you know, I'm going to cut to the chase. I can't, no fad diets, no this and that. I got to search for the truth. I, I, I need to know the truth. Right now, I was like, when I got home, when I heard that comment, I was like, I need to find the truth. And I, I don't want to be, I'm not taking any shortcuts. I'm not doing any of those fad diets. I, I got to really, truly find that truth. You know, and I was, I was super driven, you know, to change. Because, you know, it was scary. Okay, so, um, you know, 
back. So next, we are looking into. I'm looking into reversing this long term. My diet. So you know, I had um. So I'm gonna go back to this in 2016. Let's rewind back again. Yeah, like I did same year. My doctor made a reality that I'm living with fatty liver. Pre pre diet. Well, the tongue twister there. Pre diabetic type two symptoms. And that was not good. When I heard that, I was scared. It was a scary reality. I, you know, I knew it to change that for sure. And, you know, he let me know, of course, how dangerous this is for my health. And I knew from there, I knew, I, I knew from there, I, I need, I knew I need, had to, had to change something. Something had to change about this, you know. From there, it did. I tried. Desperate to change. I started my journey from, from, Right from here, of course, I was I was so fatigued, lethargic, tired, and and I'm just I was as tired of being overweight and as as bigger um as being bigger made me so you know it like I was just so slow, you know I just felt like a piece of brick was on top of my whole body like a huge weighted brick, you know, it was weighing me down. Literally weighing me down. But, you know, of course, Google, YouTube were my go-tos at first when I was researching. You know, and I found something very interesting. I found in the topics, you know, I came across, thankfully, wow, what a miracle, a plant-based vegan lifestyle. And um, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, um, a frugal divorce lifestyle. Um, well, all these terms were searchable. Yeah, of course, anyone could search it. You know, anyone could do it. You can make the change to search that. But I found that by accident, for sure. Um, I was surprised when I saw. I was pleasantly surprised. But you can probably see why. You know. You know. I was just desperate to change, and I was willing to do whatever it took. So. This this um, way of living, you know, the frugal forest, plant based vegan, the way I found it, you know, it said, you know, fruit, vegetables, starches, and grains, you know, that's what we should be incorporating. It said, I mean, it seemed like common sense to me that we should know that this is the right way. I mean, it sounds like common sense. I mean, it's healthy food. I mean, you eat for health, and then. Then I came across, you know, more stuff like interesting vegan influences online, such as Harley Johnston, you know, Leanne Radcliffe, you know, these, these two were um, pretty inspirational, right? Um, so their names, you know, their online names were Durian Rider and Freely. They were actually both, yeah, they were both Australian vegan influencers. They both are vegan now Harley says he says um um he went vegan in 1999. Yeah, um he had chronic fatigue symptoms just like I did somehow, but you know it was different. And I suffered, and, and he said he suffered with like drug abuse, which is pretty crazy. And the same with Freely, you know. She went vegan in 2007, I think. I mean, don't quote me wrong. I mean, this is I'm just trying to. You know, I think this is this is what I saw. But you know, after finding out how convincing this is, I really, I really did start doing this. I started cutting out the animal products, such as meat and dairy, slowly. You know, in that year. But you know, after fully successful doing that a year later, exactly cutting it all out and incorporating more fruits, vegetables, grains, and starches. I lost a total of 80 pounds by, I'd say, on near, near mid to end 17, 2017. And, and then it gets better from here. I, I made a visit. I, I did a visit to my doctor and he, and he was in complete shock and awe. Like he was like shocked. It was like, he couldn't believe it when he saw it. He said, he's mentioned to me that hurt. You know, he's never seen, he has never, he said to me that, Kurt, I've never seen 
any of my clients with this much dedication to change their health with the way you just did in all my years of practices. That's basically what he said, quoted verbatim, and I'll never forget that. You know, and he, he actually congratulated me, and he would, you know, of course, hope that I would keep going, staying on this healthy path. You know, it seems like it's working, working for me. He said, but the best part, you know, without all that being said, he said that my pre-diabetic symptoms vanished with like along my fatty liver disease like it was all gone he said it was basically diminished all gone it's not there anymore and um you know when he weighed me my final weight was um that day was 150 pounds so i, I guess it was over 85 pounds it was over 80 pounds it was 85 pounds totally lost wow that's pretty good you know that's impressive Super impressive. I was driven, and I, and it worked. It paid off. It finally paid off. You know, finally don't have that that bl that blubber all around my stomach anymore to weigh me down and all around my body. You know, I was so happy. I believed in myself and never, I never gave up at all. Never, just never gave up. I never quit, and I still am. I'm going today. Keep you guys motivated here. It really paid off. You know, you know, it was like a vicious cycle. With this weight gain thing I had, it was like I was trying to find a way to lose weight for a little bit, and it was just nothing was working. And I don't have to I don't have to worry about being frustrated about it all the time, and like saying, "Oh man, this is all me now. Look at all this on me. And it's all it's all. What can I do now? Oh man, I'm just so demotivated. You know, was that like that for a little bit for a few years? But you know, it came to an end." <laughs> And if I tell you one thing right now, if it wasn't for that person, that kid, calling me fat in the hallway, I would have never done what I've had done right now today. You know, that was one criticism, but that was one thing that changed my life forever. That kid's comment, that kid's comment changed my life forever. This was in high school, you know. I was, you know, it was, when I looked at myself, I was like, this is truth. I am, I am fat, but you know, I, I know it's not my fat. I mean, I know it can't be like this forever. I was like, I was pondering for the longest time. I knew in the very beginning I was pondering, I cannot be like this forever. You know, even though this kid called me fat, I was like, you know, it, it doesn't identify who I am, you know, truly. I know it's just a hiccup. It was just a hiccup. But again, if that kid, I thank that kid, whoever they are, I thank them for saying that because I would have never changed my health at all. I would have probably been still miserable being overweight, obese. Well, not overweight, but obese, considered considerably obese by whatever the health, whatever organizations. Uh, okay, you're obese. Okay. I'm like, okay. But yeah. So that's that. Okay, so next topic. Next topic right now. And um, let's see what we're looking at for time. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm sorry. Like, I really hope this, like, I'm trying to make this, like, a, a really good video here. And I'm trying to be heard. So we're, we're still doing all right. We're at 28 minutes. Wow. Um, so yeah, this is, I guess you can say at this point, this is my, my health journey documentary. Um, I'm happy to share this with you guys for sure. Now, as I don't want this to be too much longer, you know, this is the longest video I probably would do for a while, but I'm happy I did it. You know, I mean, for a while I was hesitant. I was like, uh, no, should I do it like this? And I was like, you know, I got to break through this. I got to do something and I got to piece everything together. And know how to piece it together. So, all right, on to the next topic. Okay, this is pretty controversial, you know. All right, here we go. So, that research I was talking about, that separate research, okay? Um, basically, I just think this can change, this revolutionize the Western society. Mental. And physically, mentally and physically, basically, no one, no one's really, the thing is, no one's really touched into it like this, the way I'm, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, there's been other studies with research with plant based, but I will jump into that. But um, okay, so um, actually, I'll jump into that right now. We're gonna jump into that right now before I get into my own thing. Okay, we'll do that. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go to my browser. Browser poo right here. All right. Okay. So no, this is not the one I want. This is the page I want. Okay. So this is where I'm going at. Okay. Okay. PCRM.org. This is um, the website I was talking about, but all health topics. This is a shocker. Look at this. I mean, come on, guys. Ah, uh, it's 2022. 2022, right? 2022, going into 2023. And people just can't seem to tackle diabetes type 2 specifically as we need. Like, we, this should be common knowledge, okay? I mean, I'm just shocked, you know? But basically, Physicians Committee... Tackle diabetes with plant-based diet, and this this is the this is one of the things I found. Those years I was in in 2016. Basically, you know, guys, it's just like type two diabetes can really be reversed. It really can through diet. Through the, I mean, okay, again, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to say diet, but by this lifestyle, preventing it. Managing it and even reversing. <laughs> See what it says here, people? Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. People, like, think, you know, I'm going to go to what people, okay, what these people say. People think that sugar is the problem for type 2 diabetes, and it's not. It's the other way around. We got it all backwards this entire time. It's all backwards, you know? Now, some of you guys, you know, may not, you know, certain people may not agree with this, but, like, you know, I have, again, I told you I have all my unbiased sources right here in front of me, and I'm, and I'm, you know, whether you like it or not, you know, this is what it is. And people, I mean, even after this, you can choose. Okay, I'm not going to force anything upon anyone, but you can choose to believe how you want to believe. You know, I'm, I'm going to respect that, but, you know, I'm just here to help people, you know, I, I really want to help people and, you know, inform people on this and let people know, you know, this is out there. This is research I did on my own time. So, you know, I, I guess I can, yeah, it says, look, it says our clinical research studies here at Physicians Committee, Responsible Medicine, you know, right? We put together a plant-based diet or, I mean, I don't like, okay, I'm going to exit out. Uh, I don't want to, like cross out diet to test out okay plant-based lifestyle to test out thousands of patients who have type 2 diabetes you know control blood sugar you know i mean you see what i mean guys <laughs> i'm gonna link i'm gonna definitely link all this but you know i'm not gonna read the whole article i'm not gonna read but you know this is eye-opening as this is as eye-opening as it can get look at this it's a powerful tool for preventing, managing, and even reversing. Not only that, it's just the most delicious prescription. <laughs> what? You said prescription? What is, what is food? It's prescription, Kurt. Is food a drug? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, prescription, you know, easy to follow. Unlike other, I mean, I don't like, I, I don't like the word diet. I'm going to be really, really, really honest. I don't like the word diet. It's just that word. That's, it's just a marketing thing. I don't like it. No calorie counting. I mean, this is true, people. This is true. I can vouch for this because I eat, un I eat all the unlimited fruits, vegetables, starches for dinner and um, rice for dinner and vegetables for all I can care for. I eat around 3,000 calories a day of that, and I make sure I get enough. And, you know, I eat more of the same food. The fruits, make sure it hits a certain calorie ratio. 
you know, I make sure, because I have, um, if you guys want, I mean, chronometer is a good way to track your calories, for sure. I have it all on here, but I have the exact amount I know I have to eat, and this is great, you know. Sometimes I can overeat on that, and it's I'm still fine. So, you may be asking, what, okay, so, okay, so you're going to claim that a vegan diet, or, I mean, a vegan, not diet, lean lifestyle is uh, superior, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to put anything above a superiority. I'm just going off by research, research here, okay? You know, and it's just like, I'm not going to, I'm not here to say this and this is superior. Like, I don't, that's not the way to approach things. You don't do that. You don't say something is superior. It just makes you look like an egomaniac. <laughs> yeah, it's just not, it's not, it's not about like what's superior, but like, look at this. This is, this low carb thing is basically, it's questionable. It's questionable. All this time, it's been questionable. It's just, you know, that's their their president. Yeah, and then the trick is low fat. I'm a low fat, high carbohydrate vegan. That's the truth. You know, that's the full truth. What I ate, I just told you what I ate. You know, all the fruits, vegetables, starches, and rice. You can imagine. I couldn't imagine a life without rice and fruits, vegetables, and all that. I couldn't imagine that. I couldn't survive like that. But yeah, like tackle diabetes, limit high fat. Okay, so I'm going to talk about high fat, okay? So I'm not going to, I mean, okay. So demonizing high fat, I mean, the thing is, it's not just, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be really, I'm going to be try to be fair as possible right now when explaining this. Yeah, it doesn't matter what. I mean, the way you eat, you know, there's different ways of approaching the other than vegan. I know there's like the carnivorous and the low carb and keto and all. But, you know, high fat is high fat. Fat is fat. You know, it's very dense nutritionally and um, calorically. And, it, and it's just like, you know, it doesn't matter if you eat that. If you eat that um, lifestyle of uh, carnivorous, I mean, fat is fat. I mean, you got to watch your fat even on a vegan lifestyle. You gotta look, you mean, you gotta watch it. You know, you don't want to eat too much. Unless you want to, okay. Unless you want to gain, unless you're troubling, you have trouble with gaining weight. Up that plant fat. That's understandable. And whatnot, so. Yeah, fiber, high fiber is good. For, you know, diabetes and eating, or for anyone, really. Having a high fiber lifestyle. Also, incorporating that is good for regularity, too. For sure, for sure. Yeah, um... Yes. And so, you know, I'll, have, I'll just click on these, but, like... Yeah, it's just basically... Yeah, it's a pretty good site. It's basically what I said before, so... Yeah, that's the trick. Low-fat and a vegan lifestyle is the way to go. And it's especially good for diabetes. Now, now you say, okay, so why not? What about type 1 diabetes? Is that reversible, Kurt? That question for me, you may have. And I'm like, when I hear that, I'm, I, I think to myself, well, okay, you know, type 1 is a bit harder to reverse than that. I don't think it's reversible. I'm going to be honest right now. Because it's either like this. It's like with type 1, this is what it's like. Okay, so it's like you don't get enough sugar. And your body burns through all that sugar way too quick. Or if you don't get enough sugar or glucose, then you basically die. And that with that, you just got to work through that. You got to like make sure you eat plenty of fruit, especially when you're a type 1. Just eat healthy for type 1. It doesn't excuse anything you should definitely eat the same ways because it i mean it could it could possibly help treat symptoms of type one but it's always important to eat healthy when you have the condition like this you know what i mean and make sure you eat plenty of fruit make sure you eat plenty of fruit have a fruit right near your bed 
when you're type 1 diabetic because when those glucose levels drop like that, that's dangerous. You gotta have immediate sugar source or else you'll be in a very bad situation. But yeah, that's a tip. You have it always near you. <laughs> sure, yeah, that, that would help. But yeah, um, basically, see what I mean? It's, again, eating meat increases your risk. That's the truth, people. You know, it's we had it all backwards with this. And then look at this. See, references? You want that. You want references. This is what I'm talking about. You know, they reference stuff. I mean, this... I'm going to go back to this one. But yeah, there's a video. You guys can see. Yeah, this is great. See this? It has recipes for... Look at this. All of this. This is pretty good. But yeah, this is... Look, see this? All references. This is what you want. You know, see... Success stories on this. It's just, it's just crazy that people do not know this. It's a common knowledge. People just don't know this. I don't get it. It's 2022. We need to get on the... We need to help people. You know what I mean? We're here to help you. You know, as vegans. We're not here to beat you around like a... Like, well... Well, not beat you, beat you around with forcing stuff on us. But, like, you know what I mean? It's just... See what I mean? It's just all this right here. It's all in front of our face. Yeah, I mean, like... Yeah, see that? That's just crazy. You know, and, the, and we have more, more sources over here. Dr. Hemsworth. That's a study from 1930s. 1934. How do people not see this? It talks about carbohydrate lifestyles and insulin efficiency. Which means insulin efficiency means, um, you know, when you eat high fat as a, you know, person with type 2 diabetes, that's insulin resistance. When you eat too much fat, that's insulin resistance. But it says, you know, this is a clinical um, study done in a hospital. So basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little bit of a what it's about kind of thing here. I'll talk to you about it. Basically, it was in a controlled study, right, hospital setting, um, where they had patients, right? You know, one one set of the patient, one set of the patients was fed. One set of the patients was fed, right? A um. Okay, a um. A high insulin um f, um resistance lifestyle, which consisted of. Okay, saturated fat and a lot of the fats, you know, all the unhealthy fats and unhealthy, you know, all the fatty foods that you could think of. And the other set was where they were fed high carbohydrate, low fat. And it basically goes to the conclusion that, um, it goes to the conclusion that, you know, they found that people that ate that high fat saturated fat, um, you know, high fat general lifestyle of eating, it basically showed, they should, like, when they did blood tests, it, it basically showed symptoms of insulin resistance from those group of people eating the high fat. And when you, when they, when they did the complete test and conclusion for that, they had insulin efficiency. Like, they, there was no problems with insulin resistance with the high carbohydrate, low fat, I, I mean, a lot of foods like, um, you know, like like I mentioned before, kind of those same things. But, you know, it was a test to prove a point about how carbohydrate, high carbohydrate lifestyles are good for diabetics. But, you know, that's that's the gist of it. That's, this is eye opening stuff. I'm telling you, change. I mean, I mean world changing stuff here. Okay, so yeah, I mean, this another source, Library of Medicine. You know. Okay, so, see this? This is what you want to focus on. I mean, you can go through the, read the whole thing, but like, this is where it's eye-opening. Look at this. A diet high in fat, saturated adversely. So what is saturated fat, first of all? Saturated fat is animal fat. 
But, yeah, from animal fat mostly. But don't get me wrong, right? There is some saturated fat in plants, but like the the saturated fat from plants versus the saturated fat from animals is adverse. It's just worse. It affects you worse. It's just a lot worse for diabetics. This fat in general, just just don't forget about this. Um, coconut has that, I, I I believe. I mean, all the refined fatty oils. You don't want to have oily food or any kind of oils. All it does is clog your um. Art all of the stuff is artery clogging, you know, the saturated fat really is. But yeah, saturated ver fat adversely affects the insulin sensitivity, which it's not good. You don't want that. And it says it might contribute to the development of type 2 diabetes. This is clinical trials. This just think of this. Keep this in your head. This is controlled studies. Library of medicine, you can't can't deny that. And okay, oh, this is the biggest one. <laughs> the sugar caused diabetes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is. Oh, people, we live in a sugar feared society. That's the truth. <laughs> and again, I, all these uh, references, all of them do. Cited. Look, see this? Cited. Cited. Cited by these people. Again, I just got to point that out. Show you, I'm not full of it, but um, the sugar caused. Oh, this is gonna be good. We had this backwards the entire time, everyone. <laughs> you know, sugar is the body school. Like people need to get the memo. People just don't get the memo. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest. It's not their fault. But you know, this is all in front of us right now. How do people? I wish people would research more. You know, I don't. Countless hours of research. See, uh, this, this goes back to the type 1 diabetes, diabetics, you know. Yeah. Hey, yeah, but it still says it could be the cause of these, of these factors. Again, it's still kind of eye-opening, but it's hard to really combat type 1, but you can definitely manage it through eating correctly. Right, so yeah, even said, look at this accumulation of microscopic fat. You see what I mean? All of this, you, you got to watch vegetable fat. Yeah, I was right about that for sure. So that confirms it. Yeah, it's just people just need to get the again insulin resistance, fat, insulin resistance, carbohydrates, insulin efficiency. It's efficient for <laughs> your insulin. Insulin efficiency, because the fat acts like a blocker, like a wall, like a whole. The fat acts for diabetic type two is like a whole wall, blocked up, and the sugar can't get in when all that fat's in the way. So that's why we gotta decrease that fat wall like that, and uh, so the glucose can get into your blood more efficiently, efficiently into our cells. Yeah. Yep. It fuels. Yep, see, this is a problem. This is a huge problem. A big problem. The westernized way of eating. And I was right, for sure. It's just transferred to these countries, and now it's they're suffering with this epidemic. Like, we're, well, like we are. They're starting to deal with obesity rates going up. That's just crazy. You know, this is all in front of us. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of crazy, but, um, no, if you look up, okay, I'm going to say one thing. If you look up human comparative anatomy, and I might have to definitely, yeah, I'll definitely have to source something with that, but like, it's, it's hard to find that one, but exactly because, but I do have a diagram. Well, whole it's like a poster sized thing but it really shows you in depth like, about the teeth what we have you know and kind of that thing but it shows us what we're meant to 
what we're meant to, how we're supposed to eat. And, you know, we, we're very close to the primal kingdom, how they eat. They eat a lot. They, they're kind of like us with our digestive system and our same kind of makeup. They eat a lot of fruit. You have a sweet tooth for a reason, you know, people. And yeah, it's just, that's the truth. I mean, and the truth is, you know, it's just when we have a sweet tooth, sweet tooth, you know, fruit's made for us for a reason. Fruit's magic food. You know, it's good for our digestive system and all that stuff. You know, it's a probiotic and it's high fiber, high water content. You know, that's what we want. High fiber, high water content foods is what we want for um, optimal health and digestive um, systems. So, yeah, again, conquering it. Carbohydrates. Fear of carbohydrates is just, in this day and age, it's just not good at all for, you know, it's just because of the way, it's just, it's just misinformation, what we've been told, this low carb really is, it's blatant misinformation, but again, people just don't know, right, so, so now, this is where I go into, you know, you know, what I was going to say with my part of the research, okay? So this is what we're going to do. All right, back to, finally, back to this. Um, so we're at almost an hour now. We're almost there. But, okay. I'm going to get ready to pull this up. Um... All right, so we're going to put that to the side for a second. Okay, so basically, again, my research to revolutionize the Western society. Uh, this is going to be good. Furthermore, okay, I've been researching on the biggest truths on the long-term way of health, you know, in the way of eating so we can feel our absolute best no matter what we deal with physically and mentally. I'm a strong, you know, I'm a strong believer that the way we the way we eat is definitely linked to the way of how we feel. The decision is ultimately us, up to us, yours, you or me. And a lot of dedication is needed for this. And you know, this in this investment, this one-time investment that you do, you change your life forever, you know. Um there is many types of mental illnesses that are in society, as we know right, uh, right now in the West today, it's a variety of them. You know. The typical approach is just the, pharm you know, the pharmaceutical industry. Well, this seems like the average approach by default. Okay, so here's the thing. What if it wasn't, you know, all this time? Of course, you, um, you know, if someone were to hear this, they would react with their response. And most likely, have them have them in confusion because the, 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 that's the default that's normalized the normalized route is the pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical industry and anything other than that would seem like rather weird and odd to people but it's perfect but you know it's perfectly I'm here to say it's perfectly normal to think like that you know for sure you know it's nothing wrong with thinking like that oh, okay it's oh it's so weird I don't know okay whatever so, you know, let's, let's take a look at this further. Let's take a look at our brain. Specifically, you know, it's one small area of your brain. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's, um, um I'm going to see if I can do this. Hypo, um, alamus, you know. So, why am I talking? The involved form and the horn is it's um, it's a small area of your brain involved in the hormonal regulation, all right? Material gland, and uh, it's located below your brain to regulate the production of cortisol. So, so, so basically, we're gonna go to that source right now, okay? And that's all the way up here, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm basically, I'm here to say, um, yeah, I'm, I'm reading off my article, but, you know, this is the only way I can get this information really out there. And I really do like reading this. It's really, informa- it's really, I feel like it's really insightful, but, you know, I am going off my article. I, I gotta get this information out here somehow, and this is the way to do it in this video here. Um, yeah, so look. Yeah. Mainly helps your, yeah, your, your spot. So this is basically what I'm trying to say here. Cortisol is your stress hormone in your brain, right? So um, that's that. So that being said, let's go back to what we were saying. Um, right? See if you can go back. All right, there we are. That's perfect. Oops. Uh, of course, the computer is going to act like this. Stay there. Okay, yep. Cortisol, well, they say it's a steroid hormone. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going off my sources, sources right here. So, what sit on the top of each kidney when released in the bloodstream, cortisol, different types of parts of the body can help with, you know, again, Bodies respond to stress and danger, you know, and then it says it can increase the rise of hormones like glucose. It says we have another source right here down below. And again, I'm going to link every single one of these and, um, and every single, every single, every other source I have, I'm going to link all of that in the bio that you would see. You'll see it, but yeah. You know, yeah, you know, that goes, but, um, yeah, reduce inflammation. So, yeah, this is a definitely an important hormone in our body. It helps let us know that, oh, hey, we're in danger. So, it talks about disorders. So, I'm going to go back to this mental disorder. So, when you look at mental disorders, again, I've said this in a video before. When you look at when you look at mental disorders, you know, people are unstable. So what are they unstable on? So yeah. But you know, a lot of them are unique in their own way. But a pattern of them, you know, of course this is a pattern of what happens when you have mental illness. For example, the and um, they measure, you know, certain things, like people with illnesses. And that is what they found is excessive cortisol, which is basically the hormones out of order. I mean, which means when you have a mental, Ill- when you have a mental illness, your cortisol levels are unstable. And what do you need to do to stabilize that? Well, again, people could say, okay, take your medicines, Johnny, okay, or Joe Schmo, take your medications. But while it is a, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to say, well, that is maybe possibly a temporary solution. You kind of want, you really want, why can't you do this by eating correctly? You know what I mean? This is not common knowledge. You know, this is basically what I'm saying. This needs to be common knowledge. This is important. This is crucial. This is crucial. For people like me, who have, you know, I have, I'm going to be honest, I have bipolar disorder and autism. You know, this is crucial for people like me and people dealing with mental um, complications like me. This is revolutionary. This is revolution. This could change the world. This could change the world forever if people implemented and utilized this. Now, of course, people are probably not going to utilize this just yet. This is like new stuff, okay? For sure. I'm connecting the dots. I'm just here to connect the dots. But, you know, you know, you can't ignore all this stuff. I, I, I just couldn't ignore all this stuff. I had to piece this all together. It's just, it's just absolutely crazy to me. Like, look at this. The biomarker. It's a biomarker of mental disorder. People, oh my gosh, 
This, this could change the world. This is revolutionary. You know, this is incredible. Incredible. You know, having this all... You know, we got to keep this stabilized, but... So, what you're saying... Okay, so you're going to say, what... Okay, so what, Kurt, oh my gosh. What lowers the cortisol level? You know? But... <laughs> here we go. You know, a new study it says here. Sugar switches off that response. Sugar. This may trigger people. Sugar. 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 People tend to reach for sugar when they're stressed. That's incredible. Look at this. People reach for sugary drinks to lower cortisol. That's why people reach for, I guess that's what if you see someone, if they, when they're stressed, they reach for sugary drinks to lower the, that cortisol level, that stress. Isn't this incredible? This is incredible. This is incredible. You had it all backwards. Like, look at this. This is incredible. I mean, I mean, people say, oh, it's bad to be hooked on sugar, but like, how come it's lowering, it's found to lower study finds, that it lowers cortisol levels, that, that this cannot be ignored. This is revolutionary. But again, I'm going to say something right now, before I get too, before I get too excited, you know, you know, when you eat fatty foods, say if you were to eat, like, okay, say if you are oh, on the regular, I was, I was to eat fatty pastry foods, sugar and fat aren't, again, I think I said this before, they aren't really ideal together. They're, it acts as a blocker. Insulin resistance is what you get. When you get combined sugar with fatty foods, it just acts as a wall. You can't get that sugar properly into your cells. Our, ra our brain runs on glucose, so sugar and carbohydrates is our fuel. So you're going to say, where do you get sugar from, Kurt? I'm like, well, obviously fruits. Sugar has, I mean, you know, Fruits have found to have sugar in them, but and then also vitamins. But yeah, see, I mean, this is like common sense. This should be common knowledge, but it's not. It's just simply not. I, we haven't seen. I haven't seen anyone talk about this like this at all. Like, I haven't seen anyone talk about this the way I have ever, ever. This is like a first. It could be the first, but let me know if someone else has talked about it like this. But they, th this is incredible. The way I pieced it, this is incredible. It's just incredible how this is all in place. How I just, you know, I just put this all together like this, you know, you know, and then they're doing you go back. Oh my God. Oh my God. Too much fruit. It's too much sugar. It's too much sugar. And people that are <laughs> afraid of sugar. And I'm like, okay, well then, you know, this is a myth. <laughs> it's definitely a myth. No, it doesn't. It does not. What about the sugar and fruit? Do you like fruit? Yeah. It's just... Yeah, but not... See what I mean? This is incredible. This is all insightful. I'm hoping... I'm hoping this really helps you guys. But, like... <laughs> this is just... We live in a feared sugar society. This isn't good. You know, and it's westernized lifestyle, and it's spreading to other countries like wildfire. And it's causing a big problem. Obesity rates are going up in other countries now because of this. It's it's terrible. It's terrible. It's scary. Very scary. It's alarming. It's like this has all happened. Like, see, this is what you want references. Fructose is, is bad. What about fruit? <laughs> see, people get this all twisted. This is not the truth, you know. This is not the truth about fruit being so bad with sugar. It's like, oh, how can fruit be so bad? like? People said they limit fruit. I'm like, you're just limiting your energy, okay? But yeah, basically the gist, gist of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I deal with all this. Yeah, and, I, and I'm doing much a lot better. I'm gonna say. I'm doing much better. But this is a whole other topic, but, you know. 
basically, if you have a mental illness, you got to make sure you got to make sure you eat right for sure. You got to make sure you eat correctly. It's more important for that. I mean, especially well, it's important for everyone to eat like this. But like, no one's gonna really listen all the time. People have their different opinion opinions. And they can believe what they want to believe, but. Again, I'm not here to force anything on anyone. I'm just wanting to let you know. I just don't want you guys to feel pressured. But like, all of I'm telling you, the research is all here, and I pieced it all together for, especially for this. I mean, the diabetes was, the diabetes part was kind of already, but you know, this, this is a whole next level. This is next level stuff right here. You know, this could change the world forever. I, I, I just thinking, to, I'm just thinking to myself. When I, when I piece this together, I'm thinking to myself, boy, if, if people with mental illnesses incorporated a high carbohydrate, low fat, um, vegan lifestyle with all the fruit and all the food they can care to eat for, like all the starches, all the vegetables, like I said before, man, it would be a miracle. It would be a miracle working way of at least helping cope people manage symptoms. You know, because people with, again, people with mental illnesses, I'm going to say it pretty clear. They have, we have, okay, including myself without, we naturally have higher cortisol levels or stress hormones. It's out of balance. We got to get this straightened out. You know, we got to eat right to feel right. That's my motto I live by. We eat right to feel right. Again, we eat right to feel right. You know, and all this, this meat and dairy and the, and the pharmaceutical industry, it's just the way it's marketed and portrayed to, in society. It's just like so big. It's just a lot of money put into it. You know, of course people, it's, it's of course it's going to be normalized because of how huge it is. I mean, I mean, people just don't even think twice about it. And, you know, sometimes people just don't know any better. And I'm not going to be like, again, I, I'm going to say this again. I'm not going to. I'm not here to hold them accountable. It's just like they just don't know. And I'm just here to let them know that, you know, there's other ways for sure. But, you know, I mean, there is different severities of mental illnesses, but that, I mean, this is, this could really at least treat people, some people. If you do this for, if they, people eat like this for life, for life, quote unquote, underline that for life. But, you know, ever since I've done this, this, this lifestyle, I'm here to report to you that my mental own I mean again my mental illness is just, it just feels like it's more stabilized. I'm gonna be honest. If I feel like the most stable I've ever felt in my entire life. My entire life. I mean, after like before this, I was just a, a mess. Mentally too. I was just a complete mess. I was just out of out of it, out of order. <laughs> Until you know, this this lifestyle really helped change. Changed my life. Changed my mental health forever. If I would have never found this lifestyle, who knows where I would where would have been today? Gosh, I would have been in the deep into the gutters for sure. But yeah, I'm just here to tell you this is important stuff. This is world changing. This could change the world forever if this is implemented correctly and followed. But again, people can choose how they eat. I'm not going to force anything upon them, or or you, or as an audience. But I'm just here to let you know. That this is all here. It's all all this research is here. You know, it's a matter of people taking the change and commitment to make the change and actually do it. Just do it. I did it. You can do it. Someone else can do it. I mean, anyone can do it. Um, and if you do this for life, you mean you'll definitely see results that you want to see. I mean, your energy levels will be. I mean, my energy levels are through the roof on this lifestyle. I can get stuff done. You know, I just feel like I have a lot more energy, which is a positive note to report. Yeah, I mean, even though people are different in their own ways, but like definitely, I mean, I would definitely, just because someone's different, I would definitely would want to make that an excuse with all this being in front of us or in front of us right now. It's just, it's all here. It's just a matter of people utilizing it like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, you won't see anyone piecing it together like this. I mean, this is a first. It's, this is why I was excited for a while. I mean, I'm just excited how this can change the world. For a lot of you know people dealing with illnesses, too.
mood instabilities. Eat, eat correct. If you have mood instabil instability, definitely eat correctly. Definitely eat right. It's more important for you to do that. It's more justifiable of a reason if you have a condition like this. But, you know, you know, people can be on medicine and, it, and it's okay. And it's just like, certain people, it really depends on how severe your illness is. It, dep it really depends. You'd be having a lot more luck for sure, for sure. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, you'd be having a lot more luck with it if you had like a mild thing going on with your mental. But like more severe, I mean, there has to be more research on that, I think. But like, it's just I, this could really make a difference right now, just eating correctly. But you know, not everyone's gonna do that. It's just the way it is. People are just conditioned a certain way, and they, you can't really change them. No matter how much you try to change them, but you know, I'm just here to help. You know, this is helpful, insightful information, and I think it really could make a difference. But yeah, hope you guys have a nice one. Um, again, it's a matter of time and just people wanting to make the change. This could change the world forever. You know, hope you guys have a nice one.